Amen. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise, please? Just. I'm so excited to be here again. This is definitely one of my favorite places to be because your pastor is one of my favorite people in the world. Uh, I love Pastor Bob so much. And you know, we were actually out to dinner last night and my wife, I get to have my wife travel with me. Can we give the Lord a hand cup of praise for my wife? And I was, telling, I was telling my wife, I said, listen, he's one of my favorite people in the world. Pretty much uh, my years in ministry, I, I was serving at Hempstead Assembly of God as a lead pastor there. And I was just telling her, most of the good ideas that I've come up with at Hempstead really came from Pastor Bob. And we're sitting at the table and, and he's talking and he's telling stories and we're loving, we're loving. So now we leave, he goes to his car and I go, I go to my wife, see, you see? <laughs> And she's like, oh my gosh. I said, every good idea I came up with, I know the Holy Spirit, but then there was also Pastor Bob, <laughs> right? And so I just love your pastor. And it's just an opportunity once again and an honor for me to be here with you guys. Um, if it's all right with you, can I just pray real quick? Then I'll jump right in if that's all right. Lord, thank you, God, once again for this opportunity to be here in this beautiful place with these wonderful people, Lord. And this is an opportunity where your word can just be released in an amazing way that can just change the way we think and the way our, we feel about who you are. We invite your kingdom to invade our kingdom, invade our minds, our hearts today. Let your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So recently, recently, uh, I transitioned from my church in Hempstead, Long Island. I was pastoring uh, for 26 years, 27 years, and recently, uh, last December, I was pretty much appointed to be the executive assistant to the superintendent of the New York Ministry Network, overseeing all of the churches in the metro region. And so that's Westchester, that's, that's the five boroughs, Nassau and Suffolk County, and oh my goodness, I had no idea what I was stepping into. And if I could be real, just honest with you, it was a season where I just wasn't sure of myself. Do I have what it takes to do this job? Lord, did I make a mistake leaving the church? Oh my goodness, and going back and forth. And in these moments of, 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 of stress for me, I, I, I find myself in prayer. And in prayer, the Lord gave me this verse. And it's uh, the verse that I'd like to share with you today. Romans 8.28. Romans 8, 20, and this is what Romans 8, 20 says. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. And that's a wonderful verse, but I can't stand that verse. I really can't stand that verse. Listen, my dad's a pastor, my mom's a pastor, my older brother's a pastor, my younger brother's a pastor, and then there was me. And so I was the last one to give my heart to the Lord. But this verse, I know respect to the Lord, but I can't because it's my dad's go-to verse. It's the verse that he stands on as a man of God. If someone breaks into the car and steals the radio, oh, God works all things together for good to them, love, Lord. If you lose your job, God works all things together for good to them, love, Lord. And I couldn't stand the fact that he wouldn't get upset the way I would get upset because he believed all things work together to those who love the Lord. And, and in this prayer, as God is speaking to my heart, as the Spirit is helping me understand what's happening, that's when I discovered that the reason why I had issues with Romans chapter 8, verse 28 is because I never paid attention to Romans chapter 8, verses 26 and verse 27. And so if it's all right with you, I'd like to read all three verses together and then we'll jump in. It says, in verse 26, it says, in the same way, the Spirit also helps our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he intercedes for the saints. Someone say intercedes according to the will of God. Here's the thing. I couldn't stand what Romans 8 verse 28 would say because I was not yet ready to embrace the fact that there was weakness in my life. It's hard to rely on a God who will rescue you when you're always believing you don't need rescuing. 
And weakness is something I did not want to admit. Weakness was something I did not want to face. By definition, this Greek word, uh, asthenia, and it, it means to be feeble and frail, to be ill, to be not well. And check this out, unable to cope or handle a situation. Some of the biggest mistakes I've made in my life is when I did not want to accept the fact that I was weak. Some of the biggest arguments I've had with my wife is when I did not want to ex uh, uh, accept the fact that I couldn't handle or cope a situation. I am the big man. I am the man of the house. I am the strong one, but I could not deal with the fact that there's still weakness, weakness. Even if you think you know yourself as well as you think you know yourself, truth be told, you don't know yourself as well as you think you know yourself. <laughs> Weakness. The, the, the confidence you have in knowing what your likes and, and your dislikes and what, your pr what you prefer gets us in trouble all of the time. Weakness, things that are outside of your control. About 10 years ago when I started pastoring in Long Island, if you'd ask my wife what my favorite dessert was, she'll tell you. It was good old fashioned, don't mess with the recipe, grandma's apple pie. Leave it alone. It's the best thing in the world. Hot or cold, you can't mess with the apple pie. Why? Because I know myself. I know what I like. I've been eating it for years. You can't tell me that, 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 that. That's. And then about three years ago for Thanksgiving, someone invited us over to their house and we had a wonderful meal. And obviously it's Thanksgiving, so dessert time, we're expecting, you know, apple pie, maybe pumpkin pie, but apple. there's no apple pie. She brings out this other pie and I was immediately offended because it wasn't apple pie. It was this thing called pecan pie. Or if you're uppity, it's pecan pie. <laughs> and I was, or I was offended, and, but, but my God, she said she put it in the microwave, my slice, for about 13 seconds, and then she had a scoop of vanilla ice cream on the side, and oh my gosh, when my fork touched it, the crunchiness, yet the gooiness, with a little bit of saltiness in there, it touched my mouth, it touched my soul, and oh my gosh, just like that, apple pie moved to the side and my favorite pie was pecan pie. Weakness. I had no idea on this day my favorite pie would change. And so now I'm embracing this change because I know me and I know who I am, yada, yada, yada. Well, about last year or so, while I was still pastoring Hempstead, we have a pantry, and at the food pantry, there was this crushed up box. Nobody wanted it because it was so crushed up. My cousin, he worked at the pantry. He brought it over to the parsonage and says, hey, this was there. I don't know if you guys want it. I said, absolutely not, because it's not pecan pie. I only do pecan pie. But then I got hungry, and I opened the box. I took one slice. Oh, my goodness. One slice turned to two. Two slices turned to four. I couldn't handle it. It was caramel apple pie. <laughs> Did not know this thing existed. Weakness. My mind had no idea that this thing existed. It touched my heart. It touched my body. It touched my soul. And just like that, pecan pie moved to the side. And my favorite pie was caramel apple pie. Here's the thing. You have no idea how many arguments you find yourself in because you are so sure what you're, you're so sure about what you're strong in, not realizing that just as a human being, you're weak. There's things that's impossible for you to know. There's things that's outside of your control. And here's the biggest thing. God knows that you are weak. He actually knows there's no reason. In fact, the Bible tells me that in the same way, the spirit helps our weakness. He knows that there's things outside of your control. My wife and I, we've been married, I want to say 27 years. <laughs> Close enough. All right. We've been married. We've been married for about 27, could be 26, could be 28, but it's right there in the, in the area. And from the very beginning, we've always, I've, I've always wanted kids. I've always wanted kids. We tried, we tried, tried, only to find out that we couldn't have children. The doctor told us we can't have children. It was a blow to us. I couldn't handle it. Weakness. What do you do when you're not able to 
have something happen the way you want it. It's called weakness. What can you do? And so we just accepted it and we bought a dog. His name was Mr. Beans. Mr. Beans became our baby. He became our baby. He had his own room. He had his own television. We treated Mr. Beans like the world because it was one way to deal with my weakness, right? And then one day, she, she, you know, she's very strict with her eating habits. And then she started picking at my food, which I'm not, as you can tell, I'm not very picky. And, 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 and she, I was like, wait a minute, something. And it, she says, no, no, it can't be. And she went and got a test. And guess what? By the grace of God, she was pregnant. And I said, yes, Lord, won't he do it? God will, he will do it. Yes, he will. And so we're excited, we're excited, we're excited. We kicked Mr. Beans out the room. Now it's the baby room and we changed the color of the walls and everything. We're buying all the books and prenatal vitamins and prenatal care and doing all of these things. We're excited because God is, he's a keeper. He, he, tells, he holds his promises true. And then one morning I hear a scream in the bathroom. And as a registered nurse, she recognized what she was seeing was not good. She said, Chris, we got to go to the hospital. Weakness. When something happens in your life and it seems to be outside even God's plan and there's nothing you can do about it, weakness. And I'm like, no, not my God. My God would never do this to me. God knows how much I need this. God knows how much I want this baby. And so we rush to the hospital and when they do the tests and just like that, there's no heartbeat. We lose the baby. I, got, I was devastated. God has the power to save. God has the power to move things. God has the power to prevent things. Why wouldn't you do this for me? I remember, because at the time I'm a pastor, I was, I was really focusing on youth, and the youth were there. And, 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 and because I'm a pastor, I have to always act like everything's okay. And then I pass the Chris, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, sure, no, God is good, da, 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 da. And I had to wait for the last youth to leave. And at the time, I lived about two blocks away from our church. And I, I, I ran to the church. On the, on the third floor is a prayer room, and I started screaming out at God. I wish I can tell you that it was a, a wonderful, efficient time of prayer, but it wasn't. There was way too much emotion. There was way too much crying. There was way too much screaming and yelling. There was grief in that loss, weakness, especially when you come face to face with something that you cannot control, weakness. And in the midst of all that yelling, in the midst of all that crying, I was hoping that God was hearing me, but something happened in the midst of all that. My language started to change. It was like as if God was praying through me and with me. It was two o'clock in the morning, and I wish I could go back and ask, what exactly did you say back then? But I understand, based on what verse 26 says, it says the Spirit will help us even in our weakness for we don't even know how to pray as we should but the spirit himself intercedes in these moments instead of me trying to act like I'm strong the Bible's actually telling me go to the Lord when I'm weak and he will help you you see the spirit helps us to pray before Christ, I would try to help myself in other ways, whether it's drinking or smoking up or whatever. But the Bible lets us know that even though you love the Lord, he still recognizes things outside of your control. And the Bible says he will not leave you alone, but instead he'll make his way there so that he can help you by interceding for you. That word intercede in Greek, it simply means to obtain something for someone that they cannot obtain on their own. It was a legal term in ancient days. It's something that you'll get a lawyer to do certain things for you. To intercede means to obtain something for you that you cannot get on your own. Intercession. Year, years ago, Years ago, uh, 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 when I was pastoring in, in this place in Brooklyn, there's a street known as Flatbush Avenue. Oh, word? <laughs> Represent Brooklyn in the house. And where Flatbush Avenue goes, there's another street known as Nostrand Avenue. And when Flatbush hits Nostrand Avenue in Brooklyn, we call that the junction. So here's the thing. I'm a sneakerhead. I love sneakers. I've always loved sneakers. And years ago, when the new Kobe Bryant's came out, I wanted to get them. But all, at the same time, I also want to get this other shoe known as Clark Wallabies, the Wallaby type Clarks. But the thing was, I only had $100. And a friend of mine, the youth, one of the youth said, you should go down to the junction because down at the junction, things don't happen like down at the mall. 
if you catch my drip. And so I go down to the junction, and there's this store, and I walk into the store, and I see the, I see the Kobe Bryant. I'm like, oh, wow. And I go up to the dude, and I go, how much are, are these Kobe Bryant? He says, $100. I said, okay. And I, I, I begin to put my hand in my pocket, and the youth that was with me said, Pastor Chris, what are you doing? And I said, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay for it. He said, no. And so we go outside the store, and, and I go, what are you doing? He says, no, no, that's not how you do it. I said, what do you mean? He says, give me the money. And I give him the money. He says, listen, I, I'm going to hook you up, but you just got to agree with whatever I do. In case you don't know, as a, pa- a youth pastor, you don't necessarily agree with anything your youth will do. But if I could be honest, there's a part of me that was intrigued. I, I, I said, mm. and so I gave him the money. We walked back into the store. This kid who grew up in our church, loved the kid. I knew him all his life. All of a sudden, he transformed into this other person. I never knew. He walked in. Excuse me, my man. My man. He, and he comes in. How much for this? And the guy tells him, uh, $100. He says, we ain't paying that. At that moment, I knew we we're all going to get arrested. I know nothing about this world. I know nothing about this life. I grew up, if there's a sales sticker on there, that's how much it costs. That's how much you pay. You leave with it and everything. You get a receipt. He goes, we ain't paying. I said, we're going to jail. <laughs> he goes back and forth with the guy. Blah, blah, blah. And they're talking, my friend, my friend. Da, 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 da. I'm not paying. I'm not paying. That. Blah, 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 blah. I'm only going to give you 50. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, we're gonna... And then he goes, how much are for those clocks? And the guy says, 45. He says, give me both for 100. And I know we are going to jail. But then the guy goes, deal. I'm like, what? <laughs> and so I got to be, can, can I be transparent? I said, wonderful. Gave him the money, put the stuff in the box, put it back. I walked out that store so fast before the Holy Spirit shows up and tries to change my mind. <laughs> there's a part of us like, this is amazing. But there's also a part of us like, I don't know if we should do this. But I just ran as, because, see, I didn't understand that word. I didn't understand that language. I didn't understand the culture. But I needed someone who can speak for me, someone who understood, someone that can obtain something that I could not get on my own. Listen to me when I tell you that the Spirit of God is not ignorant of the weaknesses that you face, but I'm here to let you know that He exists so that He can obtain things that you cannot obtain on your own. The Bible says the Spirit helps us to pray and intercede. That morning in that room, I don't know exactly what God was saying, but something was happening here. I wish I can tell you that the grief left. No, I had to gather myself. I had to collect my things because I still had to preach that morning. And when I went to church and and opened up and preached, people got saved on this side of the platform. And there was a woman on this side of the platform that needed a healing in her eyes. And there in that service, she got healed in her eyes. Supernatural. Nobody laid hands on her. The Lord touched her. And I was upset because God healed her. But he works through. The thing about prayer Sometimes we misunderstand prayer. We think prayer is us constantly talking to God. Not really understanding that this moment of prayer is actually an incredible divine moment of communication where you are speaking to God, but believe it or not, the Spirit of God is also speaking to you. And there's things that are happening. The Bible says there's, he'll, he'll help us pray with, with sounds and groanings and moans that cannot be even understood. There are things that, there's conversations that your spirit is having with God that even your own mind is like, huh? But if you're able to trust God and not try to fix it yourself, the Bible lets me know that this process of divine communication bears fruit. Once we lost the, uh, that, that baby, I didn't want to try anymore. Grief is too much. And I didn't want to do foster care. I tried to do foster care, but they told me that I'd have to get fingerprinted. I said, mm, I want to keep my prints to myself. The state would have to come in and I have to put my house on a the registry. They have to do all this stuff and yada, yada, yada. I said, ah, no thanks. So I left after the first, the first meeting. And instead of you know, all of that, we got a cat. Her name was Miss Penelope. So you have Mr. Beans and then you have Miss Penelope and my wife and I. We're all good. And then I never forget on the news, I heard this story about this woman in New Jersey 
And in New Jersey, this woman uh, was, was being arrested simply because uh, she was, in, she was um, a foster mom of two children. One was 13, 13 year old boy, a 15 year old boy. And the 13 year old boy died because she only uh, uh, served them peanut butter and applesauce. And instead of alerting the authorities that the 13 year old died, she hid the body in the freezer so that she can still collect checks. And I was furious. Maybe it was because of experiencing the recent loss. I couldn't understand how someone could be so wicked. But check this out. My dad invited me to preach at the church where he pastored the next day. I already had my sermon planned out. I'm mostly a lighthearted type preacher. But on that morning, boy, I was on fire. I was screaming, if there's anybody on the face of this earth that should be taking care of the fatherless and the widows, it's the church of God. It was, I was hot. It was hot. I was, I was slapping on the podium. I was kicking. I said, you got rooms in your house. You got money in your bank. We did. It was, I was anointed. I was anointed. After church, people were like, oh my gosh, Pastor Chris. I said, I don't know. I don't know the Lord. I don't know. I don't know. I was anointed. The Spirit not only listens to you when you pray, the Spirit not only intercedes when you pray, but believe it or not, the Spirit of God also speaks to you because of prayer. And I'm sitting there in my office. It's a Tuesday morning. I get a phone call, and this woman on the other line says, excuse me, uh, we're looking for uh, Reverend Delmatch. And I said, well, there's a couple of us. Do you know which one? We're looking for Reverend Christopher Delmatch. I said, speaking. She said, it's come to our attention that you're interested in foster care. And I go, no. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. But right then and there, I know the Spirit of God. See, the Spirit helps us pray. Right then and there, the Spirit of God speaks to me and goes, if there's anybody on the face of this earth that should be taking care of the fatherless and the widows, it's the church of God. <laughs> and I knew at that moment, if I tell this woman, no, I should never preach another sermon again because it's not real. And so I go, Yes. She goes, oh, wonderful, Reverend. This is excellent. We have an eight-week pr training program. We're going to need you to get fingerprinted. We, you have to put your house on a state registry. Yada, yada, yada. But I'm like, oh, God. And she goes, you know, by the way, Reverend, we here at the agency, we do everything we can to keep our families together. Would you be willing to foster his sister? What? His 16-year-old sister. What? Teenager? Teenage girl? Oh, God, no. Here comes the Holy Spirit. If there's anybody on the face of this earth that should be taking care of the fatherless and the widows, it's the church of God. Yes. Oh, wonderful, Reverend. She needs an emergency extraction from our house. Blah, 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 blah. We'll talk to you in a day or two. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, oh, God, no. I leave my office. I go downstairs, and there's this boy hiding in a bush. I pull him out. I said, what are you doing here? He goes, did you get a phone call? I said, what do you mean? Did you, what did you say? I said, what are you talking about? See, I know this kid. His name is Pablo. But the person that the, 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 the caseworker was talking about was a Christopher Suida. I don't know a Christopher Suida, but we know a Pablo. Turns out Pablo is his street name. That should give you an idea what type of brother this is. <laughs> he has a street name. He's only 14. Can I be honest with you? And don't judge me. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. He's like the baddest kid that comes to youth group. He's the type of kid that when we pray before youth, I secretly pray, dear Lord, please don't let Pablo come tonight. <laughs> don't judge me. I'm just being honest and transparent. Just a bad kid. And he goes, I said, what? He got kicked out of his group home on the Wednesday. Our deacon saw him on the street on the Thursday, kept him, brought him to church on the Sunday, and on Sunday he heard some crazy pastors say, if there's anyone on the face of this planet that should be taking care of the fatherless and the widows, it's the church of God. He goes to his caseworker on Monday and tells the caseworker, I think I know someone who will take us. <laughs> and I get the phone call. Here's the thing, when I decided to do that, I, I didn't even speak to my wife yet. My wife was working at Downstate Medical Center in the neonatal ICU. She had no clue. So I remember calling her before I left the office. I said, hey. <laughs> yeah. 
guess what happened today? And I tell her, and she goes, is this a God thing? I go, yes. She goes, well, let the Lord's will be done. I go, oh, Miss Righteous, okay, all right. But now that I know it's Pablo, because she knows Pablo, I got to go tell her it's Pablo. And so I go home that evening, and I, I, I'm going to tell her, listen, this is Pablo. And she goes, well, I have something to tell you, too. And I said, well, well, about two weeks ago, her aunt called her, asking her if she'd be willing to take in her cousin. I don't know the details of the situation. All I heard was kitchen knife, and he tried to kill his father. And my wife said yes, but she couldn't find the right time to tell me. And so she goes, see, you have a God thing, I have a God thing. And just like that, we had a 15-year-old, a 16-year-old, a 17-year-old, a dog, and a cat. And a month later, she was pregnant with my daughter, Anna. Can someone give the Lord a hand, up of praise? Show that picture, because I, I, I found this picture. This, believe it or not, so that's Pablo over there, and that's Christina. That's the boy that tried to kill his daddy with a kitchen knife. That's Peter. And that's Anna, my baby born. She was just born. Who in this picture looks like they need sleep? Go to the next picture and then we'll close in prayer. And so this is where they are now. And so my son Pablo, by the grace of God, served his country well in Iraq. He's a Marine Corps vet. My daughter, Tina, she's also a Marine Corps vet and an Army vet. And that's Anna and that's Xander. When the Spirit helps you pray, he puts all these things together in a way that will blow your mind. See, his name, my daughter's name is Chris. My son named Pablo, his name is Chris. My daughter is Christiana. My son is Christopher Jr. My name is Christopher. My wife's name is Christabel. Chris, 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 and Chris. When the Lord works in your life and begins to pray through you and for you, and he begins to communicate with you, you don't have to act like you're not weak. He already knows. But the Bible says he will help us in our weakness. Amen? Lord, I thank you, God, once again, that you can remind us that we don't have to run from you. We don't have to hide from you. But Lord, we can trust you with our pain. We can trust you, Lord, with our trauma. We can trust you, Lord, with our failures. Because you're not ignorant of our weaknesses. In fact, you declare that you're here to help us and pray for us and through us. And we say thank you, God, for that. Thank you for the work of the cross that makes it all possible, even as we continue to love and trust in you. In Jesus' name, amen.